Cornibacterium. This lecture mainly concentrates on Cornibacterium diphtheria. According to Burgess classification, these organisms kingdom, bacteria, phylum, actinobacteria, order actinomycetales, suborder Cornibacteriae, family Cornibacteriaceae, genus Cornibacterium, species Cornibacterium diphtheria. These organisms are gram positive, non motile, rod shaped bacteria. They are aerobic and some are facultative anaerobic. They are catalase positive organisms. In the cell wall of Cornibacterium diphtheria, there are long chain mycolic acids are present. There are few more other bacteria which have this long chain mycolic acids. They are Mycobacterium and Nocardium. Mycobacterium is acid fast organism whereas Cornibacterium and Nocardia are weakly acid fast. Nocardia organisms are weakly acid fast which are filamentous rod shaped organisms. After they produce offsprings because of binary fissions, these Cornibacterium diphtheria are arranged as V or X or Chinese letter or palisades or club shaped appearance inside the gram stain or in culture medium. The organisms which produce diphtheria toxin are referred as Cornibacterium diphtheria. The organisms which won't produce diphtheria toxin are referred as diphtheroids. History Cornibacterium diphtheria is the organism which is widely studied. Hippocrates' first clinical description of diphtheria in the 4th century BC and there are a lot of references that these organisms are seen in ancient times in Syria and in Egypt. Diphtheria was first described by Kleps in 1883 and it was first cultivated by Loeffler in 1884. These are the micrographs of Cornibacterium diphtheria. We can see a V reverse V or X shaped arrangement of this diphtheria organism, Cornibacterium diphtheria organisms. And here we can see Chinese letter appearance of these organisms under gram staining. And here we can also see under gram staining, this is a color picture. We can see a lot of organisms, Cornibacterium diphtheria appears as Chinese letter appearance, reverse V-shaped appearance, at different palisade appearance. Virulent factors. These organisms have pili. They have O antigen and K antigen. O antigen is the surface antigen. K antigen molecules are almost resembles like a capsular antigens. These two antigens helps in penetration of this organism and addition of this organism to the host tissues. Pili always helps in attachment. This organism has a potent virulent factor that is diphtheria toxin, which is A and B type of toxin. There are three stains of Cornibacterium diphtheria which have three different generation timings, Gravis, Intermediates and Mitis. Depending upon this organism growth, and generation time, there are two factors that have an influence in production of diphtheria toxin. One is low extracellular con concentration of iron. These organisms, Cornibacterium diphtheria organisms, always produces diphtheria toxin whenever there is a low iron concentration out surrounding these organisms. So whenever there is low iron concentration, these organisms produce excessive amount of diphtheria toxin which helps in causing an infection in humans for these organisms. Second, the presence of lysogenic prophase in the bacterial genome. Lysogenic prophase is nothing but the viral genome that is mixed with bacterial chromosome. This viral genome have a gene which can produce, which can stimulate to produce diphtheria toxin by this Cornibacterium diphtheria organism. We can call that gene as tox gene. This tox gene normally suppressed by a repressor gene which is always present in the Cornibacterium diphtheria. So this repressor gene will be activated in presence of iron. If there is no iron availability, this repressor gene will be suppressed, inhibited. Then the tox gene will get activated and the organism start to produce diphtheria toxin. 
iron plays a major role in producing this diphtheria toxin. In low iron concentration, this organism produces abundant diphtheria toxin. This diphtheria toxin is A and B toxin. A unit of the toxin always added to ADB ribose to elongation factor 2 and that inhibits protein synthesis and ultimately leads to cell death which can lead to cause a necrosis of the tissues. And the B unit always is for binding attachment. It always attaches to the receptors called heparin binding epidermal growth factors HBEGF receptor which is always seen in majority of the cells. And this B unit also have a capacity to attach to heart tissues, neurons and kidney tissues. This organism can secrete lipase and this lipase can break the lipid material inside the tissues and it plays a major role in cutaneous lesions. It can also have neuraminidase. This neuraminidase always helps in addition to respiratory tract mucosa. Epidemiology. These organisms are seen in oropharynx and skin. Children, elderly patients and unvaccinated patients are highly susceptible for this infection. The transmission occurs through respiratory route, formities and with carriers, the people who are having this organism without having infection in them can spread this infection. Decreased cases in US and developed countries because of wide vaccination. Because of wide vaccination, there is a low incidence in developing countries. But in underdeveloped countries and developing countries with poor vaccination procedure can have can lead to have this infection with high incidence in underdeveloping developed countries or developing countries when compared to developed countries. Pathogenesis. Mainly the pathogenesis occurs by diphtheria toxin. And this diphtheria toxin, whenever it disseminates into the bloodstream can lead to cause systemic conditions. This diphtheria toxin has A and B units. This diphtheria toxin inhibits protein synthesis and leads to cell death, which can ultimately leads to pseudomembrane. When these diphtheria toxin enters into bloodstream and by entering into bloodstream, the B unit of the toxin can attach to heart tissues and can damage the heart tissues. And this B unit can also attach to motor neurons and kidney tissues, which can lead to cause damage to these tissues. And whenever these organisms are inoculated or transmitted on the skin, this can ultimately leads to punched out ulcers, prolonged non-healing punched out ulcers on skin. AB toxins are proteins that consist of two parts, A and B. The A portion is an enzyme that constitutes the toxic part. The B portion binds to host cell receptors. There are several mechanisms by which AB toxins enter the cell. One mechanism involves the uptake of the toxin after binding by endocytosis. After endocytosis, the contents of the vacuole become acidic, causing the A and B portions to separate. The A portion enters the cytoplasm of the cell and exerts its toxic effect while the B portion is removed from the cell by exocytosis. Different microorganisms produce A toxins with different activities. The A toxin produced by Coronabacterium diphtheriae carries out the transfer of ADP ribose to elongation factor 2, EF2, and thereby inhibits protein synthesis. ADP ribosylation is a common action of AB toxins. Pathogenesis and clinical manifestations of Cornibacterium diphtheriae. These organisms colonizes in tissues susceptible to host, in the susceptible host. These organisms can be colonized in nose, throat and nasopharyngeal areas. The K antigen always prevents phagocytotic activity. The growth on superficial layers of mucous membrane and epithelial surfaces occurs mainly because of pili, K antigen and O antigen. So whenever they grow in these areas by inhibiting phagocytosis, they start to produce exotoxin. Whenever there is low iron concentration, 
surrounding these organisms. Whenever the toxin is released, it can lead to cause tissue necrosis. And because of this damage can enter deeper and deeper into the tissues and can cause severe damage like punched out ulcers. Because of this toxin, we can see acute inflammatory response where the PMN cells and lot of fibrin deposition and lot of leukocytes accumulates into that area. So this accumulation of this inflammatory exudates and leukocytes and RBCs can lead to cause a grayish and inconspicuous substance fluid exudate in that area which ultimately lead to form a fibrin mesh for PMN cells, RBCs, necrotizing epithelial cells and cornibacterium diphtheria which ultimately leads to form a pseudomembrane, diphtheria pseudomembrane. Because of continuous exotoxin production, this pseudomembrane can become, uh, can extend to the deeper tissues even. Whenever this exotoxin is absorbed by blood and lymphatics, we can start to see systemic toxic manifestations like the myocardium will get affected and peripheral motor neurons will get effect, affected and kidney tissues will also get affected. Clinical conditions. Respiratory disease, the diphtherial respiratory disease. In res diphtherial respiratory disease occurs majorly in nasopharyngeal areas. During this condition, a pseudomembrane formation occurs in the nasopharyngeal areas, which can ultimately lead to increase the inflammatory response. Because of that, we can see cervical lymph nodal enlargement. So that ultimately leads to produce a bull neck. During the early stages of this respiratory diphtheria conditions, the patient starts with fever, sore throat with swelling of tonsils and pharyngeal regions which can ultimately lead to produce a pseudomembrane. Whenever the pseudomembrane is very small enough, because of cough, the pseudomembrane will get dislodged and the patient comes back to normal condition. If the pseudomembrane is wider extensive and spreads toward the deeper part of the respiratory tract, because of cough, sometimes this pseudomembrane will get dislodged and can obstruct the respiratory tract which can ultimately lead to respiratory arrest. Systemic complications. Whenever this toxin which is produced by this organism in the pseudomembranous areas, if it disseminates into the bloodstream, it can lead to cause myocarditis and peripheral neuritis. During peripheral neuritis condition, we can see the paralysis of soft palate and paralysis of respiratory muscles especially the diaphragm muscle can lead to cause a respiratory arrest because of it is irreversible. Cutaneous diphtheria. Organisms enter through break in the subcutaneous tissues through respiratory route whenever we call, whenever the patient coughs and because of the droplets inoculation in on the skin tissues wherever there is a break it can ultimately lead to cause chronic non-healing punched out ulcers. So here we can see the pictures of pseudomembrane. Here is the pseudomembrane in the nasopharyngeal areas of this patient. And because of this pseudomembrane production, because of inflammatory response, because of cervical lymphadenopathy, that leads to bull neck appearance here. And this is cutaneous diphtheria, which produces the punched out ulcers, prolonged non-healing punched out ulcers with specific margins. Diagnosis. We can diagnose this infection organism by gram staining. In gram staining we can see V, X or Chinese letter or palisade and club shaped appearance of this organism. We can identify this organism with Albert stain or Nissa stain. In Albert stain or Nissa stain, the cardiobacterium diphtheria organism, because they have metachromatic granules, they appear as purple colored organisms when compared to diphtheroids. Tensile medium, on tensile medium, these organisms grow as black color colonies because these organisms can change telluride to tellurium. This tellurite is present inside this tensile medium. Low flux medium, by using low flux serum medium, these organisms will grow with more white, moist, glistening colonies. Sheik test, which is used to distinguish between individuals who are susceptible to this, to this infection and those who are resistant to diphtheria. 
and we can also test as a sensitivity sensitivity test to toxoid lx test to know the potency of the toxin and these are the few pictures of cornibacterium diphtheria this picture is a nissa albert stain or nissa stain picture and you can see the organism by rod shaped organisms with metachromatic granules here and organized like v shaped or chinese letter appearance in this picture and this is tensile media the organism grows as black color colonies and this is low flow sclerum medium on this medium the organism will grow as white moist glistening colonies and this is on blood agar the organisms are grown here as small colonies on blood agar treatment prevention and control of cornibacterium diphtheria we can treat this infection by giving antitoxin this antitoxin neutralizes the exotoxin the cornibacterium diphtheria toxin so with this antitoxin we can also give the antibiotic therapy effective in con in conjunction with antibiotic therapy toxoid toxoid preparations are used for vaccine as active immunization for diphtheria usually given in conjunction with pertussis and tetanus vaccines or as booster dose with tetanus and diphtheria vaccine schedule we can give this vaccine starting from second month fourth month sixth month 15th month and 18th month and after that we can give a shot of this diphtheria at 4 years age and 6 years age and after that for every 10 years we need to give a booster dose for the individuals antibiotics that are used for cornibacterium diphtheria or penicillin g is the drug of choice if the patients are sensitive to penicillin erythromycin is an alternative drug the other species of cornibacterium or cornibacterium jucium this cornibacterium jucium is always seen in hospital environments it can cause catheter infections prosthetic wall infections and because this organism is always in hospital environment this has an antibiotic resistant resistant to majority of the drugs the treatment for this cornibacterium jucium is vancomycin 